Is metacognitive therapy more effective than the gold standard of therapies, the cognitive behavioral therapy, when it comes to treating people with generalized anxiety disorder? The so-called metacognitive therapy might be the most exciting evolution of cognitive behavioral therapy up to date. Because by now there are several studies in which it could be shown that the metacognitive therapy seemed to be a little bit or sometimes by a surprisingly large amount better than the normal cognitive behavioral therapy. And today I want to present to you one of those really exciting comparison studies which was conducted by Nordahl and colleagues and in which uh, the founder of uh, metacognitive therapy, Adrian Wells, was involved and even one of the most popular therapists of um, cognitive behavioral therapy was involved, Thomas Borkowitz. And these really remarkable therapists trained six other psychotherapists who later should conduct the real therapy. So they were trained in the metacognitive therapy by Adrian Wells and they were trained in cognitive behavioral therapy by Thomas Borkowitz. But what were the differences between the two therapy methods? Well, in cognitive behavioral therapy, they learned, for example, applied relaxation, which means that the patient who suffers from uh, anxiety in case of generalized anxiety disorder it's mostly about the worries people have they worry about normal things things everybody worries about for example you worry that a beloved person could die that your father could die or that you lose your job yeah or that maybe there might be a nuclear war all these normal worries that everybody else has as well but for people with generalized anxiety disorders, these worries become so intrusive, so strong that they can't barely think about anything else. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, they learned applied relaxation, which means that they trained to realize when such worries occur. And the moment they occur, they were trained to relax it away, for example, with uh, a variation of progressive muscle relaxation. And of course, another module of this cognitive behavioral therapy was to work on the dysfunctional thoughts, um, which means that the worries had to face a reality check. For example, if you believe that your child might be kidnapped, you are questioned about the real probability for such an event um, and whether you are worries might be fed by, for example, um, pictures in the media, for example, in movies in which such awful things happen all the time. So this was cognitive behavioral therapy. In metacognitive therapy, the approach was quite different because as the name of metacognitive therapy suggests, it was not about the content of your thoughts. It was what you think about your thoughts. So from a meta position, what do you think about your worries in case of anxiety disorder? What do you think? Are your worries helpful? Do you think if I worry enough, someday I will have a solution for all my problems? Or do you, on the other hand, think that your worries might be damaging to yourself? Maybe it damages your brain if you worry all day. And if you have these two metacognitive thoughts, on the one hand you think, well, um, if I worry, it will be helpful, I will find a solution. And on the other hand, worrying is bad for my brain. You see that this is some kind of vicious circle and you, get, you feel worse and worse every day. And in metacognitive therapy, these meta worries um, these meta thoughts are targeted, for example, by little behavioral experiments like, um, okay, you think that worrying helps to solve your problem. Now you have four more hours of worrying. Sit down and worry four more hours. And later on, we will see if these four more hours of worrying helped to uh, solve the problem. And of course, the person will realize it didn't work. Worrying did not help to find a solution. There are problems in the world that you can't fix with worrying. 
And another module in metacognitive therapy is where you focus your attention. So you will realize in metacognitive therapy that it is possible to switch attention from your worries to the task at hand. For example, if you have to make a PowerPoint presentation for your work or something like that, it is possible to say, I will stop worrying, I will stop focusing my attention on the worries and I will focus now on what I have to do for work. And something that could help is, for example, to say, okay, I give myself every day a special time for worrying. For example, every day at six o'clock, I give myself half an hour in which I can worry. But if I begin to worry at another time, I will say stop and will concentrate on the task at hand. So these were the two therapy methods. And in the study, they did not only have a therapy group for cognitive behavioral therapy, for metacognitive therapy. They also had a third group, which is very important, which was a weightless control group, which uh, got no treatment at all. And it turned out that in comparison to the control group, the weightless control group, the cognitive behavioral therapy was effective about 38% recovered from generalized anxiety disorder. 38% is, is okay. But in the metacognitive therapy, 65% recovered. So the metacognitive therapy was not only much more effective than weightless control group in which no one recovered, but it was much more effective than cognitive behavioral therapy, which up to this point has been the gold standard of therapies for generalized anxiety disorder. And what is really fascinating is that these results could also be observed after two years. Even after two years, the metacognitive therapy led to higher recovery rates than the gold standard method of cognitive behavioral therapy. So really exciting results. And everybody who's suffering from generalized anxiety disorder can get hope out of these results because now there are more strategies um, for example, targeting the meta worries, the uh, question, do I think worrying is really helpful? And on the other hand, do I think that worrying might be harmful for me? Or for example, focusing your attention on something else. I know it really sounds too easy to be true, but those results show if you are helped to do it and if you get the right instructions, it is possible to uh, overcome generalized anxiety disorder. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want, we will see you next time.